Blessings, everybody. My name is Jafon Seeley. Could you imagine what is actually possible when we start honoring and recognizing our inherent worth, realizing that we are that which is assisting in co-creating our experience? And with that understanding, start recognizing that every human, every individual, everything that we interact with, reflects that same inherent worth. It's not about an adventure, it's about the atmosphere of the consciousness of adventure, the lifestyle of adventure. How many people would say that their lifestyle is adventurous? My name is Lisa Benson. I'm a diversity, equity, and inclusion consultant and the author of Anchored and Bias, Fired Over White Tears. It's a book detailing my lived experiences with workplace bias and what fueled my passion for normalizing conversations about differences and creating safe spaces for everyone to bring the best version of themselves to life every day. to the Practical Prayer Podcast. I'm Carol, here with Reverend Dr. Bill Marcioni. How are you doing? I am doing well. We completely missed our pre-pre-show, so now we're just doing our pre-show on the New Thought Media Network. Okay, so... Uh, Very exciting. You've been running around all morning, huh? Yeah, I got some things I gotta... It just pushes me to the edge. And I I was almost here, like almost on time, and my headphones cracked. Uh oh, and right in right in half, and so when I looked at him, I said, "Well, did it really have to crack? I don't think I pulled it out, you know, like the full distance." Mm-hmm. And so I was trying to do a jack leg repair <laughs> job on him. So I'm gonna be like this the whole time, you know, so that I can hear and all of that. But the other thing I'll is, do this to be in solidarity with you. <laughs> so the other thing is, you know, probably about time that I got some, you know, more up to date earphones i just kind of like these but you know yeah well and now that you're using your larger hair they're uh they're 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 more challenging they are because i i just put them on my you know around my neck actually and Mm -hmm. i said well why don't you because i'm i just haven't had time to do all the adjustments i said well why don't you just pull it over top of your head and see if you could fuss your hair around it so it won't look so weird crack that's when it broke I said, you know what? One more time would have been okay. You know, you could have like tried to fix it when you weren't on. Always a thing. The little tiny ones that I'm using, mm-hmm. just easy. I, you know, I have a set. Just mm-hmm. never used them, right? So I'm I know you're resistant to change. You are. No, you I'm are. not. I would like to, but <laughs> you know, it's just <laughs> I really would. It's just that when I get finished this, I got something else, and I don't think about it again till the next time, and. Most of the stuff I do, I'm not on camera. Do you know what I mean? So it mm-hmm. really doesn't matter. So I just right. Well, you you're, you're you're one of those radio folk. Yeah, yeah. So you know, I mean, being on camera is nice, but it's not my go-to. Gotcha. You know, so. All right. Well, sometime between now and when we actually start recording the podcast, you need to turn down the headphone volume a little bit because I'm hearing me. Okay. <clears throat> and and one time of me is plenty. <laughs> How's that? Is that better? Well, let's see. I have to talk a little bit. That'll work. Okay. That'll work. Because I'm doing d- direct recording, I got to have it up. So you know what I was probably doing? I was definitely doing something this morning before I... I keep saying I can't multitask, and I do it anyway. I don't think I do a good job, but whatever. All right. 
Well, maybe, maybe maybe that's something to talk about in the Practical Prayer podcast. By the way, just a, a, a quick hello. The, the folks uh, watching on New Thought Media Network have the opportunity to, to listen to us doing our catch-up, our weekly catch-up. So I can do my fingers like this and say, hi, everybody. Hello, everybody. Um, <clears throat> yeah, usually we start 15 minutes early or so and just uh, go over the stuff that we're going to go over. Uh, and then you get to, to participate now. And by the way, you can participate as well. You can put a, a comment into the comments and mm-hmm. say hello. Afternoon from Colorado. Hello, Shay. Uh, good to have you with us. And uh, everybody else who's uh, hanging around. And um, you can also go to the website, be the light.com, b-the-light.com. And there's a little comment button there so you can submit a comment or a prayer request or a question or a provocative entreaty. <laughs> and and we'll deal with it or not uh and so what'll what'll happen in a couple of minutes we're going to start the practical prayer podcast recording this is episode number 120 120 this is the end of 10 full seasons of the practical prayer podcast it sounds impressive yeah it sounds like we are either committed or have nothing else to do <laughs> I can tell you this. <laughs> I've got plenty of things to do. So I'm absolutely, you know, committed when I, I block out this time and I hit the chair. Okay. Appreciate it. So do you know what we're going to be talking about in this episode? Um, yes. This is a kind of real-time thing that has come up a couple of times this week with some, some other folks in conversation. And it's when you are um, following the steps of a practical prayer, or any prayer, to be fair with everybody, um, and things don't turn out right, and you, you're positive, and you're expecting, and, you know, vibes are high and all that good stuff, and it's not, it doesn't come out right, or it just doesn't. So there was a, a line that you used early on, and I, I grabbed it and held it, like, up until now. I love that mm-hmm. line. <clears throat> okay. But sometimes, you know, when a person is in the slump, maybe up until now doesn't quite get it for them. So I thought I would bring that to you and we could talk about it. Okay. So it's about it doesn't work. Yeah, because we know prayer works. Mhm. And sometimes it doesn't work. That's What's that up with that? Good. Yeah, that, that would mm-hmm. be good. All right, we'll do that. And I actually have a couple of fun stories uh, relating to uh, prior episodes of the Practical Prayer Podcast, including last week, which was about chakras, and one from many, many moons ago when we discussed green Volkswagens. Yeah, I remember that. So, and it, it came up again. So uh, let us go ahead and start the uh, the Practical Prayer Podcast, and uh, then we will uh, uh, we will get an even further idea of what the hell we're talking about. <laughs> I actually thought I was just jumping in on the, you know. Oh yeah, you thought you, you were already, already ready to start, but yeah, because yeah, because I was I was just paying it to like, please just don't mess things up, you know, keep no, the ball rolling. But I'm it's cool good. Well, that. you know, you, you come in at the last minute and break your headphones, and then what happens? Yeah. So then now I can come in with the regular welcome to, which was not. There we go. <laughs> this okay. is this is the podcast take two. A practical prayer is a prayer that works. These discussions between Reverend Bill Marcioni and Carol Lawrence dive into the details of how it works and how to work it. Reverend Bill is a new thought minister and the author of Practical Prayer for Real Results. Your new life begins with a new thought. Carol Lawrence is on a spiritual quest, finding the new thought teaching after decades on the pulpit in three different traditional denominations. I've got some questions. Together, they're exploring the philosophy and activities that come together from many of the world's religions to create the practical spirituality that is New Thought. Welcome to the Practical Prayer Podcast. I'm Carol here with Reverend Dr. Bill Marcioni. And we are looking forward to a wonderful conversation about what happens when our prayers don't work. Mm. Yeah, that's going to be uh, that's going to be fun. I actually have a couple of program uh, related notes, uh, things that have come up in the in the last week for me that are related to the podcast. So last week's episode was about the chakras, 
and we went through that the the whole the meaning of all the chakras and um then just by happenstance i was at a sound healing uh event on saturday and got the opportunity to sit in the room with somebody playing the crystal bowls at the chakra frequencies mm -hmm. and got to dive into it at an even deeper level it's like ah I just did my own little personal refresher, and here it is, vibrating my heart chakra at heart chakra frequencies, and that was wonderful. And the other one that was super fun is um, I have a, a new uh, client who's I'm working, uh, doing some practical prayer with, found me through Insight Timer and through the podcast, and uh, she lives in uh, in England, and she was on vacation uh, in Wales, and. <clears throat> she's got a the, the, it's like a mobile home kind of thing and there's a wind fence that they set up to to keep the breeze away from the the stuff nearby and she had gotten a new one from her daughter so her daughter had like dropped this thing off and she just threw it in and went on vacation or holiday as they say there and um she listened to the Practical Prayer podcast episode where I said, you know, you start with something simple, like you start with a prayer to see green Volkswagens. And that's just a random example of seeing green Volkswagens. She went and set up this, uh, this wind barrier and the decoration was green Volkswagens. Wow. So wow. there were like dozens of green Volkswagens <laughs> sitting right in front of her. <laughs> I love that story. I love the wonderful way that that happens. And I heard another story about you know somebody um, who you know the the prayer was to see Teslas back in the days before you saw Teslas everywhere, and a car carrier filled with every different kind of model of Tesla you know drove right past them on the highway. Uh, because when we open ourselves up to possibilities, the creative law that creates everything responds, and it creates something new for us. And I'm using that to double back in to what happens when we do the prayer work, and we clear ourselves, and we set our intention, and we know the truth of who we are, and we go through the five or the seven or the nine steps, and it doesn't work. Mm -hmm. And that's what you wanted to talk about. So embellish a little more about the, the topic or the question, and we'll dig in. Well, the one that sticks out for me is, I don't know, it's just, let's just say it's general. Um, when, you're at, when you're hoping for something, uh, maybe a financial breakthrough or a financial blessing or whatever, however you want to call it, or a health challenge to be moved. And you're keeping, as I said in the pre-show, like you're keeping your vibes high and you're, you know, as far as you know, there are no blockages, as far mm -hmm. as you know, and it's not happening. And that's kind of difficult for, um, it's, it's a challenge to one's faith. And I understand from the other side of the street, I understand the problem there. You can't put a time limit on it, of course. Mm -hmm. But then <laughs> when you cross this side of the street, you think, okay, you don't put a time limit on it. But it seems to be more realistic that the possibilities are more realistic. And regardless, when a person is waiting, it, it, it can get discouraging. Yep. You know? So if you could talk about that, uh, because I yeah. know prayer works. Prayer okay, works, so because, and yes. and prayer works not by giving us what we want or what we say we want, but what we believe we deserve. And so there's a whole lot that gets packed into that. Could you if say that I'm, again? Say that again. Prayer, our prayer responds. The universe responds to what we believe that we deserve. Wow. So, okay. and, and you know, that's on the one hand, that's good news, and on the other hand, that's bad news. Because that means that we can do affirmations up one side and down the other and do the steps in the practical prayer and claim that we believe something. But if we don't actually believe it, what we're going to get showing up in our life is the result of what we believe rather than what we're, we're claiming or wanting or hoping for. That is, um, that's amazing right there because you yeah. have to stop. And I know, you, I know you're ready to go, you know, do more. But listen, you got to slow down a little bit for those of us who are just kind of understanding. I'm perfectly happy to let that one spin on the rotisserie for a while. That's, <laughs> this is big. This is really big. Yes, it is. Because to think that you get what you think you deserve is kind of deep. You know, you think about what you want, but I think deep down some of us may believe that we don't deserve and don't. we're not always conscious of that belief. Mm-hmm. Oh, and... 
<clears throat> we talk about self-help and being able to, to do the, the self-help techniques of affirmations. And those work right up until they stop working. And the reason they stop working is the stuff that we're claiming, the, the things that we are affirming are outside of our belief system. It's, mm. It requires our belief system to grow, to be able to embody and accept something bigger than we've been accepting in the past. And that's why prayer is so hugely powerful because it uses that same affirmative technique, but it puts it inside of a spiritual tool. Because instead of saying, I claim my good, we're turning away from ourselves and we're opening up to an infinite creative power that creates galaxies, that creates everything, and saying that which has created everything, which has created me and empowered me with that same creative power, that's the team that's bringing this newness about. So it does it from an even higher level. So I have myself do nothing. It's the Father within who doeth the work. When I'm turning it to the Father, everything is possible. Mm -hmm. When I'm thinking that it's, you know, the, 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 the fingers that are attached to my hands are going to have to shape this whole thing and bring it into being all on my own, um, it's a lot less powerful. It's a lot more ego. <laughs> I have a lot more control over it than when I'm counting on a divine power that is available but doesn't always respond exactly the way that I tell it to. Mm -hmm. um, so what we're doing is <clears throat> we're changing our belief. And what happens if we're claiming something that we absolutely don't believe? Like if I'm claiming that I am prosperous, that I have five times as much in the way of uh, uh, financial uh, resource as I have now. Mm -hmm. And I believe that the amount of financial resource that I have now is about as much as I'm ever going to get. If I believe that this is what I deserve, then I'm going to continue to have the same level of prosperity that I've been having rather than the newness that I'm claiming. Mm -hmm. What I need to do is get out of my own way to get rid of those false beliefs so that I can invite in something new. So, really clear. That makes wonderful sense. How do I get out of my own way? <laughs> <laughs> Because I know people out there are listening, they're asking that question because, yeah, it makes sense intellectually, but how do I do that? First, I have to figure out how I'm in my own way and then how to get out of it. There was a wonderful uh, prayer practitioner in the 70s and 80s. That's uh, so when she, she really came uh, into her own and made a name for herself, uh, Louise Hay. Mm -hmm. And she worked with thousands of of patients or clients, people that she did prayer work with. And what she said in her book, You Can Heal Your Life, is that every last one of us believes that we're not worthy. Mm -hmm. That is the, the key belief that we have, is, is, is one of unworthiness. So the way to change around what you're talking about is to address our worthiness. And we can do that from our head, and sometimes that works a little bit, and we can do it from our hearts, and that works even better, but it's more, it's not as easy to get to. And the way we do it from our heads is, it's an infinite universe. It is one creative unfolding, and we trace it back to whatever our creation story was, and everything that exists is created by the one. It is God saying, let there be light, and there is light, and the light shows up and it's not God and the light. It's the light came from someplace. And there was nothing but God. So the light was God and the light continues to be God. And everything that God created was by sharing itself and allowing that sharing to unfold and reveal itself. Same story in the Big Bang. So once we identify that there's only one and we then connect the fact that we're it and we have to be, and it's not possible that there's everything in the universe is God except me. <laughs> that would make me so special. <laughs> Knowing that just like everything and everyone else, I am part of that one divine power and presence, that means that if there's worthiness anywhere, if anything, anywhere, anyone is worthy of this good that I'm identifying, then that's got to be possible for me as well. There's no separation. There's no divine power and presence over there. And then like I'm in cheap seats <laughs> and I don't get to participate. <laughs> so the prayer process itself is really helpful in 
resetting our understanding that we are worthy. And the way that I just did it was to go through the head. So we can logic through that. Okay, there's only one and I'm part of the one. So whatever is available to the one, it must be available to me. And we can arrive at that understanding in our head. And if we, if we don't believe it in our heart or in our gut, then we're still going to be pushing away from that because there's going to be a disconnect between what we believe and what we say we believe. That's where meditation comes in. That's where the other prongs of our spiritual practice come in. Surrender and allowing and forgiveness, which are all things that we can't just pick up a cue and say, I'm doing that now. It's a process and we get to be involved in the process. If I think I'm in control and I'm gripping on tightly in control, then I'm not allowing. I'm not mm. making room for the infinite to create something new and different for me. So that's a big piece of it. And if I, if I now do believe that I'm worthy of whatever good that I'm seeking and I let go of the activities and the behaviors that I've had that I've been trying to use to grab it, then there's an infinite realm of possibilities that can come along and, uh, and, and bring it to me perhaps in exactly the way that I described, or maybe it's completely different. Mm -hmm. Maybe it's going to be just so completely surprising. How did that happen? Okay. I, I get the, um, doing it intellectually with your, with the head. Can we stay there just for a moment? Absolutely. Because, because that makes absolute sense, right? You can, it just logically fits together. But then there are these other thoughts, perhaps in our, the back of our minds or subconscious, I did this and this isn't a good thing. And I have this in my past and that's my past. So unworthy is more than saying that I am the light, you know, God is the light and I'm a part of God and God is a part of me. And however you want to put the language that is really the end of the story, you know, mm -hmm. it's the beginning and the end of the story. But what about when I've done things, been involved in things, uh, even entertained thoughts that are not good, <laughs> you know? <laughs> and, and I'm trying to pull on things that I've heard, you know, aside mm -hmm. from my own crap um, that I had to get over. But how, what, I mean, how do you deal with that? Judgment, self-judgment. That's yeah. that's it. Yeah. And and that that's another piece of deservability. If I have done things in my past that I think make me undeserving of something good in my future, then I'm right. And it doesn't have to be that way. Mm -hmm. Because on an infinite level, if it's possible for us to do it, it's God ordained. Even if it's the most horrible thing that humans ever do to each other, and we would look at it and say, Nope bad, not on my watch. God's not judging us. Our, we're judging ourselves and our fellow humans are judging us. And it's possible to change. If I've done all sorts of things that make me unworthy and make me um, evil or bad or in, you know, cruel, I can change. I can change and I can stop doing what I've been doing. I can leave my old ways behind and embark upon something new. And then I'm going to be reaping the results of that newness rather than having to live with the old stuff over and over again. And sometimes it's from being traumatized. Sometimes it's, it's being victimized because somebody else did something to us. And that puts us at the bottom of a, a power differential and we feel less than. And if we don't deal with that, we stay there. We stay feeling less than. Mm -hmm. And it's, you know, somebody did come along and take our power and do something mean, but we've now given away our power to overcome it or mm. to, to move on to something different. And uh, it just, it remains operative. Can we use another word besides God ordained? Can we say God allowed? Is it okay. the same thing? I, is it the same thing? Yeah. Because yeah. It, it... This one of those, those, um, really brash statements that I make that annoys people who find themselves to be particularly spiritual or religious, which is that God loves you so much that God doesn't care at all what you do. Mm -hmm. That's unconditional love. Yeah. And people hear, what do you mean God doesn't care about me? No, God, 
loves you so much that God doesn't care about your specific activities. The love does not begin and end when you're cruel to puppies. <sighs> I don't want you to be cruel to puppies, but it's not like God's going to say, that's out of bounds. You can't do that. Now, we have our own experiences, our own beliefs, and the basically the, the, you, um, you reap what you sow. So that does come back around. So if we put ourselves in the mindset of being cruel or, or mean or um, uh, taking advantage, we tend to live in that sort of a world, and it does come back around to us. But it doesn't have to, and it's not God doing it. So if it doesn't have to, I mean, are you interrupting karma or... What do you mean it doesn't have to come back around to us? <clears throat> if I've been doing stuff in a particular way for a long time, mm -hmm. and I suddenly say, that's no longer okay with me. Mm -hmm. I, I cannot behave that way. I cannot have those attitudes or those beliefs anymore. And I make a clean break. There's that huge freight train of stuff that I've done in the past that's still moving, mm -hmm. but it doesn't necessarily have to keep going forever. Once I admit it and I deal with it and I surrender to it and I go through the forgiveness process for it, it's possible for it to just go away. Now it might still come up every once in a while, mm -hmm. especially the opportunities to repeat old bad behaviors that I was so good at. <laughs> but, we're, but we're free to choose and we're free to move on from there. Yeah. This is a huge thing, you know, because um, I think the, when you say prayer, um, no matter what kind of prayer it is, if you just say it that way and really don't get into it, it's like, um, not headlines, but it's an overview because the, the work happens first mm -hmm. or, ben, or in the background, maybe, because you're not going to not pray until you get it done. You, <laughs> I don't think that you should do that. But it's the work is in the background or in the begin before you really... Because you, if not, it would seem that you're praying without 100% belief. Right. And we can use the prayer, as I've mentioned numerous times before, it is therapeutic because the prayer will change our life. And it's also diagnostic. When we get to the point where we have aligned with that infinite creative power and identified that that is us and then made that new claim... I am prosperous, or I have wonderful, loving, uh, romantic relationship. And that little voice says, nah. You don't have the money. You don't deserve the money. You don't have the relationship. You're going to be as lonely and miserable as et cetera, et cetera. That little voice tells us what we really believe. Mm. And it does that right after we have gone and made that claim of the infinite, in spite of what we had experienced previously. If it's okay with us, then it's uplifting. It's like, oh, yeah, this, is, this new thing is happening. And if it's, yeah, but that's not going to happen. That tells us that there's still something going on in our belief system that is going to keep that good from showing up or from showing up in the same wonderful way that we had been uh, anticipating it. Mm -hmm. So then I think I stand corrected. It's a good idea to do the work ahead of time or all the time, actually. But it's but, continuous, yeah. Yeah, it's part of even in the. It's a part of the prayer. Right? Yep. It, yeah. Yep. That's why you know practical prayer starts out being five steps. If there's no doubt, it's five steps. If there's doubt, then you need another two. You need to to turn away from the doubt and reinforce what the affirmation is. And if that works, then great. It's a seven step prayer. And if it doesn't work, it just became a nine step prayer because you got to go through those two <laughs> steps again. Then it's eleven and thirteen and seventeen. You know, you're going to wind up with some odd number of steps. But it, but it's worth it. <clears throat> it's worth it. Well, if one, one of two things will happen. Either we'll get a, 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 some clarity in our belief system. Maybe we get to fine-tune what the prayer is a little bit. So instead of, I'm, yeah, I'm a multi-billionaire, maybe it's like I have plenty of money to pay the rent. You know, so we back down on the affirmation until it's within range of our belief system. And it's, that changes. And the other one is we realize, this is way too big for me. In which case, we've got to change the prayer entirely. Because I am praying for something that I simply do not believe. And that's where it's wonderful to work with a professional, somebody who is trained to do prayer for somebody else. Because when I'm doing prayer for someone else, I don't, I'm don't. i not sitting down with their baggage. They can tell me about their baggage, and I can understand where their baggage came from, but it has nothing to do with me. I can believe something wonderful about them, even if they, for the life of them, can't imagine how that's going to happen. Mm -hmm. 
Yeah, I find myself in that place a lot uh, because my mother was a, a person of huge faith. I mean, I, she would always just say, well, I don't see why that can't happen. No matter what, <laughs> since I was really small, well, just go ahead and do it. Or we'll, we'll just, we'll do it, you know, like by Friday, we'll just go ahead and do that. And that's all I've known all my whole life. So I tend to be that way. And I don't think of obstacles. Or if there's obstacles, I'll say, well, you know, we'll just get around it. Let's go. Mm-hmm. And so my thing is, all right, let's go. But that's not, I don't think that's the norm. You know, I think I'm just like probably lucky in that way. That's not to say that I don't have, you know, things that I have to get over and in my belief system and all that. But it is something you have to pay attention to because, absolutely, you, you know, you could get discouraged if and not know why because you could say God is not doing it for me. Mm-hmm. You know, yeah, blaming is. God doesn't work. Let's take a break and we will continue with this discussion about doing our best and it still doesn't work. Yeah. You can put practical prayer to work in your life and Reverend Bill Marcioni can help. He is offering an online class that teaches you to create your own practical prayer in five weekly one-hour sessions. The final hour brings your practical prayer together, anchored in live original music by a notable New Thought musician. Practical prayer is based on the most effective prayers found in religions and spiritual practices all over the world. Use it to deepen ever more fully into the truth of your spiritual nature. It's the core of a transformational spiritual practice that's simple, even if it's not always easy. Reverend Bill is also available for private spiritual counseling prayer sessions. Together, you'll lean into the challenges you've experienced in life and explore the transformation that's possible through practical prayer. He'll uncover old, hidden beliefs and uproot them to make way for the life of your dreams. Everything you need to know is on the website at b-v-light.com. That's b-v-light.com. Welcome back to the Practical Prayer Podcast. I'm Carol here with Reverend Dr. Bill Marcioni. And I wanted to call your attention to a comment that was made, a, Mm -hmm. a piece of it. At the bottom, it was from Shay. He said, it is bringing the subconscious to conscious." And, yep. you know, that really resonated. It helps me because I understand the, the process. It, it's kind of hard if you don't know what's going on and what you have to, you know, work with. But there are times I've sat there and said, okay, this is what I've just realized is in my subconscious. Okay, so now I got to work on this. I got to figure out how to work on it. But it's cool knowing exactly what it is mm-hmm. rather than to feel like, you know, I'm just like a ridiculous failure. <laughs> 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 You know, and like God doesn't even like me right now, so forget it. All of those things come to mind, you know, as a as having been a pastor for over thirty years, I've heard it. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. And and you've heard people who have come in claiming something and they have so thoroughly deluded themselves that they believe this pious thing that they're telling you and you look at them saying, uh no. Not you, friend. That is that you, the person you're describing and the person who's sitting in front of me are two completely different people. Just way deep, and you know, <laughs> <laughs> when and and I never will forget this, and I share this with people when they're you know they have doubts. Long, long, long time ago, like you know, in another life, um, I had went through a dark place, blah blah, and didn't have anybody on my side, and blah blah blah. And I remember the day. I did the pivot, and I love that word, you know, and you use it a lot. I stood outside of the church. It was a July, a July afternoon. It was really hot, and I said, okay, God, I don't know you like this. I just, the God I know is not what I've known all my life or what my parents taught me. I don't know what these people are saying, but I'm done. I'm out. (laughs) It's me and you, and every every time I go there, I still feel the same energy. And I'll tell you, I didn't know what I was doing. I didn't know where I was going. I just knew that wasn't it. This is a pivot. If you're God and you're even remotely as cool as they say, I'm out. Let's go. And I think mm-hmm. it was my first let's go thing. Who knows? But I was just so completely trusting that 
whatever it was that I was, that they said I was, it couldn't matter that much. <laughs> you know what I mean? And, and just yeah. not to be so mysterious, you know, I was a divorcee in a fundamentalist church, and I know there's a lot of people out there that are experiencing that, and they make you feel like a leper. I said, whoa, wait a minute. Whatever it is, the worst, I can't be that bad. Come on, God, let's start over. Come on. Yeah. 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 And when, when you do that from a place of authenticity, where you are absolutely firmly convinced and believing that there is this divine power and presence, there is this infinite love that loves you, you can shed everything else and say, bring it on, let's go, show me. Yeah. And there are spiritual practices that we can use that way. And for somebody who is a skeptic and a disbeliever and is sitting there with their arms folded saying, ah, this isn't true, and if it's true, go ahead and show me what they're going to see is something completely different. They're not going to get that message from the infinite because they're not open to it. Mm -hmm. So we, we get to put ourselves in the place of receptivity. And that's one of the practices that we can use is um, in, in a meditation, just to let go of everything. Okay, I am available. I am open. I am willing to be filled and uplifted and informed. I am inviting insight and guidance and awareness. And then, without any attachment, without any need for it to be on a particular schedule, see what happens. Mm -hmm. See what happens. My friend James Mellon has a process. And uh, what you do in the process is you say, I know nothing. Yeah. I have myself know nothing. Yes. Now what can I know? Now what can I know? Now what can I know? And that's the, the surrender and the release. I know nothing. Mm -hmm. I know nothing. Now what can I know? Yes. And be willing to spend some, spend some time on that. Because especially those of us who are relatively skilled or talented, to spend a lot of time claiming that we know nothing really goes against our muscle memory. <laughs> but it is an amazing experience. Yeah. You know, it's hard. But you did use a word. You said authentic mm -hmm. and sincere. So if you go in with strong, you know, values or just have a not, you know, I, we said before the show started, you said that I didn't like change and I cracked up about that. I said, <laughs> he would not find a single soul in the world that would agree with that. <laughs> 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 because I guess, I mean, it, you know, you said it so you see it, but um, I'm just so, I guess I've been through so much in my life. I'm saying, listen, God. You want me to change on this one? I can't figure it out, but hey, let's try it. You know, let's and go. and I, that was that was a little bit tongue in cheek about you <laughs> and change because there are you you are so in, incredibly open to change and just doing things differently and laying down everything that you thought you knew, and you know and and that's on big things, and then on little things like <laughs> well these headphones are old. <laughs> But rather than replace them or learn to use the new headphones, I'm going to break them in half around my hair and then have to hold them in place during the entire podcast episode. I know. I was thinking people are saying, what is she doing? <laughs> yes. Yes. Yeah. And everybody is resistant to change in our own way, even the people who are the, 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 the most open to it. You know, you get into mm -hmm. a, a, a practice of allowing and acceptance. Um, Buddhists do a wonderful job of being unattached to the stuff that's going on. Mm -hmm. And um, it can be remarkable, and it can also be a little bit frustrating as we're trying to help them and say, well, how can I help you? And they say, I don't need anything. It's like, well, I want to help. <laughs> I'm fine. <laughs> it's like, please, <laughs> let, me, let me do something here. <laughs> let me lend a hand. So, I mean, my joke is if we're completely unattached, and completely open and completely flexible. You can never take attendance. Because I call Carol and you just not be attached whether I think you're here or not. <laughs> I can, if you need me to be Carol, I can be Carol, but I'm not claiming that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I wish we had a long time to, you know, to talk about, about this because it's not being attached is really difficult. You know, I mean, it connects with being a control freak or if you're not a control freak you just really want something to happen and you can't see it not happening that way and it's you i think 
it's good to have somebody that is a little more open that you hang around with, you know, or you have a partner or, or a practitioner or something. That helps because oh, being, yeah. being open to something different is, can be a little scary unless what you've been doing is the pits, then you can be a little bit more open. Um, but it, it's hard, you know, and yeah. I, I acknowledge that to people. Yeah, so perhaps we'll do uh, an episode on openness and allowing. Mm. Right now, let's uh, let's take another break, and then we're going to do a prayer on uh, letting it work. Learn to put practical prayer to work in your life. The steps are simple to learn and let you begin to get real results to create the life of your dreams immediately. Reverend Bill Marcioni's widely acclaimed book, Practical Prayer for Real Results, gives you a clear summary of the new thought principles behind practical prayer and the series of easy-to-understand steps found in the most effective prayers from religions and spiritual practices all over the world and throughout history. Practical prayer is not a replacement for your religion or practice. It's a technique to make the work you do in consciousness even more effective. The book includes 40 prayers on various topics that you can adapt as needed and use as your own. Practical Prayer for Real Results is available in paperback, Kindle, and audiobook on Amazon or at b-the-light.com. That's b-the-light.com. Welcome back to the Practical Prayer Podcast. I'm Carol here with Reverend Dr. Bill Marcioni. This has been amazing. Yeah, good conversation about when we do our best, when we say our prayers and it doesn't work. Mm. What's going on? And I'm going to tell a quick story, and this is a this relates to prosperity. Um, I went and joined a health club uh, post pandemic, and so I have a place to swim. And the place with a nice pool is pretty expensive, and it's not covered by my insurance. And so I was like, yeah, I don't want to do this. And they gave me a really good deal. So I got to go for the entire summer for free. And the, my monthly dues payments just started. And so I get to look forward to ah, This is what's going to be happening for that. And then today got an announcement that they are going to be accepting the insurance that I'm on. Wow. So <laughs> <laughs> is that a prosperity yes. story? Yes. Y you yes. bet it's a prosperity story. And it's not it's not going to involve me getting any additional funds. Yeah. But there's a commitment that I made and suddenly there's it's being covered by something else. Yes. And that's what it means to let the prayer work. Because if I wanted to have X number of hundreds or thousands of extra dollars in my accounts, and I think that the way it has to show up is by somebody hiring me or by somebody giving me a check or by somebody dying and leaving me a gift or something. I'm constraining the universe. Yes. I am yes. limiting the way that the good can flow into my life. Yes. So when we've done the prayer and set our intention and the good isn't showing up, we need to broaden out our perspective a little bit. Perhaps there's something that we need to let go of, some attachment, some assumption, some level of detail that it has to be a particular way or it's not going to be anything. Yeah. Maybe the good is sitting there waiting in the wings in a form that we are not ready to recognize yet. Yeah. And what has to happen is for us to say, well, I'm looking for this experience of good, however it shows up. And if, as, if on cue... There's our good marching in from the wings saying, <laughs> I'm now on stage with you. <laughs> yeah, I got a couple of those stories. And we don't have time, but yes, yeah. yes, yes, yes. Yeah. And the important thing to remember, because, I mean, I mentioned that you've got stories. There are, and lots of people have stories about when we let go of our attachment to how we think it's going to work. Suddenly it works in a way that's completely different than we thought. And so many times it's much, much better than we thought. Mm-hmm. So that's what happens when we let go, when we let our prayer work. And that's the prayer for today, is letting the prayer do its job. Wow. Letting ourselves get out of the way yeah. and allowing the infinite creative power that creates everything to create this newness for us. Because yeah. it can. Because it can. And we start by turning our awareness, our attention to that infinite creative power, that divine love, that one source of everything 
that one that shares itself as every part of its creation. Every star in every galaxy, every planet, every person, every place, every particle is that divine presence. It is God's love unfolding and revealing and expressing in its own specific and particular way. Everything is that divine love taking form. And all the good that's available anywhere is available everywhere. And because I am part of this infinite universe, part of this manifest creation, I know that all of that good is available to me now. That divine presence that is God itself exists not in me, but as me. I am that divine presence right now, right here, and always. And so is each person within the sound of my voice. We are each individualizations of that divine presence with full access to all of the good that exists anywhere. It is an infinite universe. Any limitation that we impose upon the universe by thinking that it needs to respond in a particular way or act in a particular fashion or do something in a way that we have described or defined simply puts a limitation on the way that we are accepting that limitless good. So I now claim that each of us in our own way is letting go of those attachments, is releasing that need to have things go in the way that we thought that they should. And instead is opening that divine presence, that limitless potential, that good that's always available, opening to it in new ways, allowing and inviting and encouraging it to flow into our lives in a way that fills us with richness and sweetness and good. I know that this good is unfolding now for each one. I know that this awareness is broadening for each of us right now. I know that this openness is, is widening right now. Each one within the sound of my voice is letting go of those attachments that are no longer serving as we open up to what's new, as we surrender any limiting beliefs and invite in that goodness, that one infinite creative power that has created everything is already saying yes, it's already creating this newness. It's bringing that freshness about in ways that go beyond what we could have expected. And love is unfolding. And I'm grateful for it. I'm so, so grateful for this good, for this awareness of the law, and for the wonderful, joyous, fun stories we get to tell. We were clicking our heels together and dancing a happy dance. Love is unfolding now. And so I let it be. And so it is. The Practical Prayer Podcast with Rev. Bill Marcioni and Carol Lawrence is a production of BeTheLight.com. Be-the-light.com. Where you can find more information about practical prayer for real results. Our theme is by Music of Wisdom. You can learn about the spiritual community of New Thought Philadelphia with daily guided meditations, weekly celebrations of spirit, and Rev. Bill's classes in practical spirituality at NewThoughtPhilly.org. And that is the Practical Prayer Podcast for this particular Monday, September the 11th. <sighs> that was fun and open. Yeah. Yeah. I, yeah. It was very instructive also. You know, it, it just was really, really good. This has got to be going to be one of my favorites. I have a Excellent. Favorites, but this one is going to be. You said something right at the beginning that I was, I was, <laughs> I was hoping to be able to respond to which was about hope, you know, and the, the way that we have a hope that something is going to happen. Because I happened to just be reading this morning or rereading um, uh, the, the myth of uh, Pandora's box. Mm -hmm. You know, that the, the, the gods got mad and gave Pandora this box filled with every evil <laughs> and told her not to open it. And then she opened and the evil started getting out into the world and she slammed the lid shut, but there was only one evil that she didn't get and that was hope. <laughs> you know, maybe that, you know, I'm, I'll bet you that's what is in the back of my mind and my subconscious because I never liked that word hope. Never. Hope, hope is a word that, that is completely wrapped in doubt. 
yes. And I've always had a very difficult time explaining it because, you know, the church likes that word hope. And I'm oh, trying yeah. to explain that, nah, this thing is the, no. But I just stay away from it. But thanks for reminding me of that. It's probably where it came from because mm -hmm. it's all clear. You know, with that story, I'm going back to that story. Thanks. Yeah. Yeah. And I mean, pfft, the, the, <laughs> all the, the Roman and Greek myths are just filled with dysfunction. Like, oh, yeah, let's give this poor girl a box <laughs> filled with every evil <laughs> and then make her responsible for yeah. evil getting loose in the world. I mean, come on. But, you know, some of the, I used to watch those uh, Greek mythology movies and stuff when I was younger. Mm -hmm. And it's just so much in it that explains what people believe. Oh, yeah. But don't know that that's what they're believing or where it came from. And, well, one thing you could say, it's just a freaking movie, okay? It's not theology. <laughs> 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 oh, it was for them, but yeah. Yeah, yeah. I should be more sensitive. I'm going to try. Well, you can, or not. Yeah. I mean, the story of Icarus keeps on coming around. As you see somebody who's getting too full of themselves and flies too close to the sun and their wings melt. It's like, all right, there's, there's some folks who have been doing some high flying and it's time for their wings to melt. You know, I'm not going to be in judgment of them, but I'll be okay when that happens. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> so we yeah. know where I'm going after this. Back to the library. Best Buy. Best Buy for Headphones, Library for Greek Myths. That's right. <laughs> As a matter of fact, I may queue it up before I leave. <laughs> I well, just say when work. something is mentioned to me, I just go and get it and, you know, refresh my memory or learn something new, and then I'm on to the next thing. So rest assured, before midnight, I'll have it. Perfect. It. Perfect. And get yourself earbuds. Fits with your hair better. I have some earbuds. They were I given to. They're brand new in the box. I've never used them. Well, in maybe fact, you try you that. Be... Me, you blew up the uh, the instructions and sent them to me. I did. Yes, you did. Okay. So you know, it's me didn't want to change. And they're AirPods. <laughs> you don't even have to plug them in. You just need no, to charge I don't. them. I don't. Bluetooth them. Yeah. All right. Yeah. Okay. I'll see what happens. Try. All right. We'll we'll see where you at. <laughs> Next time. <laughs> okay. All right. It's wonderful to see you. <laughs> see you. Please help us say thank you to our organizational sponsors, including the Hefferlin Foundation, Affiliated New Thought Network, International New Thought Alliance, Science of Mind Archives and Library Foundation. Center for Spiritual Living Denver, Center for Spiritual Living Midtown, New Thought Philadelphia, Planned Happiness Institute, Summit Center for Spiritual Living, One Heart Retreats, Center for Spiritual Living on the Lake, Unity Spiritual Center Kitchener, Ohm Center for Spiritual Living La Mesa, Satya Center. Center for Spiritual Living North Jersey, Unity of Savannah, and Center for Spiritual Living Seattle, as well as all of our individual donors. Thank you for making New Thought Media Network a place to be. Please come be you. And remember, like, share, and subscribe. New Thought Media Network, positively inspiring.